sector you list. Is there what I call a rational, passional alternative? Can we develop a new morality, drawing on the best of the past, but appropriate? And we are doing that. The liberation of women in the last century, the liber liberation of transgendered of lesbians and homosexuals, the recognition that children have rights, that aged people have rights, that the handicapped have rights. These are all part of a new morality. You don't find that in, particularly in the area of sexuality, in the ancient religious literature, which condemned that. We need a new enlightenment today. This should be positive, constructive, and affirmative. So there is a great split between religious ethics and, let's go on to the next one, please and other forms of, and uh, the new morality, I call it eupraxophy. Now, can you pronounce that, please? Eupraxophy. Can you say it? Eupraxophy. People said they can't pronounce it. Exxon Mobil. Look at that. EU good, praxis, practice or conduct, Sophia, wisdom, scientific, philosophical, and ethical, and good practical wisdom. So I'm saying that we need a new eupraxophy. What are you? We're not a religion. We're not a religion. We draw upon science, philosophy, ethics, literature, human experience. We're eupraxophy. That's what I label it, eupraxophy. Go on to the next. <coughs> it's funny, this following slide was put up by the, done by the Chinese. They're all, sh they're all showing overheads and I was so busy I didn't have to do it. So I wrote it out and they got this up in about 45 minutes, I couldn't get, a, get over how smart they were, but really very, very capable people. <clears throat> the common, so in, in, in my writings, in my book, could you show my books now at this point? And we'll come back to that. <clears throat> They're on the side, and that's a commercial. <laughs> I'll be glad to sign them. Go ahead. I spend my lifetime in working this out. I think my most important book is The Transcendental Temptation, A Critique of Religion and the Paranormal. And I grieve that the skeptics of Ontario are not willing to cooperate with the Center for Inquiry because we have so much to learn in modern skeptical movement, the examination of the paranormal, the same processes as in religion. And that's what I try to show in this book. Second, my most important book on ethics is Forbidden Fruit. I think that's been translated to about nine, nine languages, including, uh, okay, the, another one is The Courage to Become the Virtues of Humanism, published by uh, uh, Greenwood Press, Prager. Eupraxophy, ah, there she be. Eupraxophy, <laughs> living without religion. We need to build new institutions. We need to, we're overwhelmed by churches and temples and synagogues and mosques. We need to build new religions where non-religious people can gather and find common interests and share values together. Now we have the paperback. <laughs> and then the pa oh, living without religion. Okay, eupraxophy was difficult to pronounce. I poured out a paperback. <laughs> Oh, this is uh, my new one, uh, Affirmation, Joyful and Creative Endeavor. I only had one copy. I gave it to Don Cullen because he gave me a copy of his poetry tonight. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. And this is a one that grew out of the, the conference in uh, Toronto. You know, we met in Toronto in 2004. How many people were at that conference? 2004. It was on science and ethics. We had a great number of Canadian scientists and philosophers. We met at the University of Toronto, and this book is a compilation of many of the articles, plus many others. And I'm saying that science can help us to make wise choices. Okay. So we're running, and there's my favorite one, exuberance. And my wife says to me, please don't get up this morning and be exuberant again. <laughs> I get up and I tap dance and sing, and she's French, you know, they have a pessimistic view. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> okay, I just mentioned some of the books. What is that? Oh, okay, here we go. All right, so let's just let me go quickly through my theory. First, I think there are certain common moral decencies that we share. I've been uh, to 60 countries of the world. I find every Everywhere people are wonderful, can be loving, kind, particularly on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, 
where's number one? Integrity. The first one was integrity. Maybe you showed it. Take it off. The first principle that you ought to tell the truth, be honest, be sincere. Okay, second, we should so show fidelity to our friends, relatives, and neighbors in the communities in which we, uh, we should be dependable. Third, we ought to be benevolent. We should express goodwill towards other persons. Yes, I consider that to be basic. We should exude goodwill. And I find all these nasty people, wow, 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 so bitter and sour. And they tell me, oh, the problems of the world are so great, I can't enjoy myself. I think you have to have a goodwill towards everybody. Also, uh, a beneficent attitude. We should uh, assist people where we can. We should help to increase the goods in life. And then the final, our fairness. We ought to show gratitude to others. We should seek justice and equity. We should be cooperative. We should negotiate. We should settle things peaceably. Those are the common law decency. And then uh, in my writings, I've gone on to achieve a good life. And that's what we want. We have obligations to others. But every person has an obligation to himself. And so uh, what are the principles of achieving a good life? Well, first, we have good health nutrition and exercise. And I exercise an hour every day. I've invented a new exercise. I've never copyrighted it, so don't take my trademark. I call it aerobic trotting. Every morning I trot, but I go like this. At the same time, one person asks me, what are you, a bird? I go <laughs> down the street. <laughs> an hour of free day gets the whole body going. That's exuberance. <laughs> exuberance. When you need self-control and moderation, you need self-respect and self-esteem, high motivation, such as Justin Trottier has, tremendous, <laughs> right? <laughs> the capacity, you need the capacity for loving others. That's so important. We've emphasized reason and we de-emphasize love. And that includes orgasmic, yes, having an orgasm, <laughs> filial for our parents, friendship for our children, collegiality, we need to care for other human beings. What's the next one? I can't see it from the side. Commitment to a beloved cause. What? You tell me. Commitment to a beloved cause. Uh, commitment to a beloved cause, such as the Center for Inquiry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, uh, the joie de vivre, the ability to enjoy life and live it up. The achievement motive. Achievement motive and creativity. They're all part of the good life. We shouldn't be ashamed about that fact. And you have these naysayers among us, the pole bearers and the and the theologians and the bishop, don't do this, don't do that. You know, dried up prunes. Life is very important. You've got to live it. You only have one life. One needs to balance one's commitment to others, family, children, parents, lovers, friends in the community, in the face-to-face -face area of interaction. To achieve a full life, individuals need to develop certain excellences. And I go through the excellences. I think that's what we want to emphasize. Go on to the next one. Excellence. To achieve a full life, we need to develop altruism. You know, in the Affirmations of Humanism, which I published on the inside cover of Free Inquiry, and that has gotten more attention than almost anything I've ever written, the Affirmations of Humanism. How many people remember who get the Free Inquiry? You see them, yeah. yeah. It says, we believe in optimism rather than pessimism, hope rather than despair, learning in the place of dogma, truth instead of ignorance, joy rather than guilt or sin, tolerance in the place of fear, love instead of hatred, compassion over selfishness, beauty instead of ugliness,